Let's assume that when the driver unlocks the vehicle, the IG power flows through a series resistor network. This resistor network limits the current and then sends the IG voltage to pin 19 of the IC40048. When the IC40048 receives the 12 volt IG signal, it recognizes that an ignition on or unlock command has been made by the driver. At that moment, the IC sends out a control command to close the main relay. This output is pin 20 on the IC, which corresponds to pin 30 of the ECU. Now let's take a look at the diagram. Here is our main relay. When the ECU drives this relay by pulling pin 30 to ground, the relay closes. Once the relay is closed, the hot at all time power, the direct BAT supply, passes through the main relay and powers the entire vehicle control system, placing everything into a ready to operate state. You can also see that this same power line is fed back into the engine ECU through pin 5 and pin 6. I call this the main relay power source. This power is used to supply all internal systems inside the ECU, such as ignition coil drivers and power driver ICs, so the ECU can enter a full standby condition. At the same time, this power is also fed into pin 42 and pin 18 of the IC40048. And in parallel, it is sent to the drain terminal of this MOSFET transistor, where the voltage is stepped down to generate the 5 volt supply for the entire ECU system. Basically, our power sources have now been fully supplied, and in theory, the ECU already has enough conditions to operate. However, for actual repair work, this is not enough. We need to continue analyzing what happens after the main relay power is turned on. When the main relay power is supplied to the IC40048, the IC will generate a voltage of around 6 to 10 volts and send it to the gate terminal of the MOSFET transistor. This voltage drives the MOSFET to turn on, creating a 5 volt output at the source terminal, which is used to supply the operating system. This 5 volt supply is also fed back into the IC40048, where it is used to generate additional voltages such as 1.5 volts and 3.3 volts, which power the MCU. These two voltages are provided through pin 10 and pin 11 of the IC. And at this point, the MCU officially begins its operation. This is the complete operating principle of the ECU power section, explained step by step in a clear and logical manner. If you follow all the steps I have just analyzed, I believe you will be able to repair all ECUs of this type with no power or no operation faults very easily. Now, returning to our main task, I will apply these steps to diagnose and repair the faulty ECU in front of us. First, we need to provide full power to the ECU and perform a test to observe its behavior so that we can analyze the fault as accurately as possible.
please observe the indicator LEDs on the power supply. You can see that when I turn on the power switch, the main relay closes but is not held. This indicates that our MCU is not yet running. When the MCU is functioning, it communicates and commands the power driver ICs to maintain the operating state, keeping the main relay closed for a period ranging from several tens of seconds up to more than a minute, depending on the ECU model. This behavior allows the MCU time to store runtime data during startup. Therefore, we can easily tell whether the ECU is truly active by observing the power supply. Let's review the circuit diagram and analyze the sequence. When IG power is applied, it goes into IC40048 at pin 19. The IC begins to operate and issues a control output at pin 20 to close the main relay. Observe the power bench. When I flip the switch, the main relay closes, confirming that IC40048 has received IG and has commanded the relay to close. So the question becomes, why is the ECU still not running even though the main relay is closed? We must think logically about what follows relay activation. Specifically, check, check the following conditions. Are the post relay power rails present at pin 18 and pin 42 of IC40048? Is power present at the drain D terminal of the step down MOSFET? This MOSFET drops voltage to create the 5 volt rail for the ECU electronics. If those three post relay rails are present, check whether IC40048 is producing the gate drive around 6 to 9 volts at the MOSFET gate G. Only then will the MOSFET conduct and produce the 5 volts at the source, S. Case A, if the MOSFET gate drive is present but the ECU still does not run, measure whether there is 5 volts at the MOSFET source. Uh, if you have 12 volts at D and 6 to 9 volts at G but no 5 volts at S, you can conclude the MOSFET is faulty, or the 5 volt output line is shorted somewhere. Case B. If 5 volts is present but the ECU still does not run, analyze the next rails. The 1.5 volts and 3.3 volts supplies generated by IC40048 for the MCU. If 1.5 volts and 3.3 volts are present, but the ECU still will not run, the MCU itself is likely at fault. This is a logical inference. To confirm MCU failure, you must perform additional checks. I will publish a separate detailed guide on diagnosing MCU faults. If the 1.5 volts and 3.3 volts rails are missing, then IC4048 is likely defective or those rails are shorted. Based on the analysis sequence above, you can visualize where we should start our diagnostic measurements, right? First, when the IG power supply is applied to pin 19 of the IC40048, this IC begins operating and sends the command signal to activate the main relay. As we checked earlier, when we supplied power, the main relay engaged. This indicates that the 12-volt IG power at pin 19 of the IC is present. The IC is functioning, and it has output the ground control signal for the main relay, causing it to turn on. However, the relay does not latch, which means the ECU is still not operating. This tells us that there is an issue somewhere in the circuit. Therefore, we need to continue checking the next required conditions after the main relay engages. Specifically, we must verify whether the post main relay power lines are supplying correct voltage to the IC 40048 and whether this voltage reaches the D pin of the 5 volt power MOSFET. Now, we will proceed to measure and verify each condition step by step exactly as I have outlined. Follow this sequence to pinpoint why the ECU has not entered its operating state.